When watches got smart, unfortunately their designs also got uglier. And don't get me wrong, I love my little wrist computers. They're great for fitness tracking or even replacing your phone in limited situations. They have a ton of technology crammed into these little cases. But watches are more than just technology. They're a set of design constraints that lead to little pieces of art that you can wear. And so to give up that space for just another screen you're gonna carry around seems like a missed opportunity. So when I discovered Chronobi, I saw a great example of how digital and physical design could come together to create something more. I've done a couple videos with them now. I love their product and they are a team of insanely talented people. So I was really excited when they offered to sponsor a trip for us to go to Sweden, meet up with them, hang out and shoot some videos. Their headquarters are in the south of Sweden in the city of Malmo. It's formerly an industrial town that's gone through a huge transformation over the last decade and is now a hotbed for new tech companies. Cool new condos are springing up everywhere. Old shipyards are becoming office space. And there's this completely insane single skyscraper in the middle of everything that's called the Turning Torso. It's really weird and cool. It's actually a private residence that's off limits to tourists, so we were really lucky and we had a chance to go to the top of it. For a relatively small city, there is a bizarre amount of amazing architecture, new and old. After we spent a while exploring the city, I sat down with their product manager, Mats Larson, hey there, to talk a bit about design. A few years ago, I started getting really into watches and I've always loved technology. I've always loved gadgets, but you know, watches are sort of our oldest gadget. Like they're just technology at its purest and simplest. And so we were approached by Chronobi a while ago. You guys are a relatively new company yeah. and you are bringing the two together, uh, traditional watch design with modern tech. We're at a place where a lot of what used to be physical devices are becoming apps. Uh, there's just less and less physical objects in our life in a way, right? Yeah. There's this great image online of a Radio Shack ad in the 90s. Mm. It's a full page of dozens and dozens of devices yeah. that are now all in a exactly. phone. So moving forward, how do you imagine there being a balance between physical devices and digital like apps and, and objects? There will always be a purpose for a physical product. Mm -hmm. So for instance, turning on lights from an app yeah. To me, that if, if there's a switch on the wall. Yeah. No, that's know, a great example, yeah. actually, is, yeah. is if you need to go three menus deep just to make it yeah. not dark. <laughs> no. So, uh, I mean, and, and same with the watch, you know, mm -hmm. to tell what time it is. Right. You know, why, why unlock your phone or, or take up your phone from your purse to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to see what time it is. Yeah. There are things you do instinctually, uh, like flicking your light, mm -hmm. riding a bike. Those kind of things is... is it's hard to replace. There's kind of parallels to like virtual reality versus mm. real reality. Riding a bike in virtual reality mm. doesn't doesn't really work, right? I mean, no, you it kind, does. You need all the tactile, the physical. Yes, the, yes. So going forward, we're going to have to kind of figure out that balance. I mean, mm. I think any of our vision right now is kind of guessing yeah. at exactly what that balance mm. will be, but that we know we need more of it. An example of it that I see a lot is in my cameras. I mean, I like a camera to have dials mm. and, and physical things that I can grab. I, yeah. I get really frustrated when it's all just menus and I need to press a touch screen a lot to mm. get further in. I mean, it works great for convenience on a phone, but it's a loss as well when you can't just physically manipulate something. I fully agree. And, mm. and I, I think looking at our designers, for instance, I mean, they, they have they work on computers, but they still have tactile input yeah. uh, devices, the, you know, the to make the design. The worst example of this for me is when there's rumors about Apple moving to all touch keyboards. I heard that. And <laughs> that, that can't happen. No. <laughs> that can never happen. But, uh, no. The idea about that there will be one device mm -hmm. for, for everything. Yeah. I don't really believe in that. Right. There, there will be, you know, there will be light switches. <laughs> I hope there will, so. There will yeah. be watches yeah, yeah. and there will be bikes and cameras and cameras yeah i think there's also an idea now that like people are attracted to more physical devices because we've we've lost a lot of them right mm. so parts of that are the resurgence of like really um like earthy design items so like leather aprons yeah. or like um, making restaurants feel kind of old-timey or old-fashioned mm -hmm. or making filtering photos to look vintage mm. it's to bring back this like physical element right yeah and uh by you know so the example with watches is like you take you can take it off your wrist, but then you you are losing something physical. So, mm. I, you know, I think things like this are a response to that you can still live with advantages of modern world, but still hold on to that yes. old world. In a way. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's not nostalgia we are we are doing here. I, I truly believe that. I mean, watches are here to stay, right. 
and uh, there, there will, I mean, there was always the, the place on your wrist. It, it's, it's a good place to have, to <laughs> yeah, have, to yeah, have, yeah. To have something. Right. So you will have something on your wrist. One idea I'm interested in that you, you guys have to deal with is kind of the reality of working internationally now. Mm. I mean, there isn't, it's, so you guys are based out of a relatively small country. So an important mm. thing is like collaborating internationally. How yeah. do you find it like working with a, a team that's sort of spread out all over the world and... Uh, you know, not being physically present for everything that you need to do. Sweden has been really good at in uh, working internationally al always, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been a very open country and, uh, and we have always got an influence from abroad. Then our background here is we, we come from international companies since, since before. I just think yeah. that's a really interesting thing is how many companies Sweden has produced that are globally known mm. and that have, it seems like those companies from the beginning looked outside of Sweden's yes. borders and were meant to be part of a bigger world of mm. design and product. Kids here, they, they learn English, you know, uh, at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, uh, we do subtitles of everything here in Sweden. So people know, uh, know English and other languages very well. A lot of bands in, in Sweden. Oh, the yeah, music, a lot music, of bands. Music, Great uh, bands. Doing, yeah, thank you. Are singing in English. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, so it's very natural yeah. to look outside of We, went, outside to the, of we went to the ABBA Museum and that was yeah. amazing. So, yeah. <laughs> Mats, thank you so much for having us here in Sweden, taking the time to show us around. It's been great. It's been so great having you here and you are welcome back at any time. After that, we got a tour of the Kronaby office and got to see where the watches are designed. Since my background is in digital product design at Getty Images, Life Magazine, and Stocksy, it was really interesting to me to hear about their challenges of doing all the physical product design, testing it in-house, but also doing all of the software development. I got to hang out with their creative team and talk about high-end product photography and 3D compositing and all that stuff just blows my mind. It's so impressive what they can do. And I also just always love to see other people's workflows and how they get things done. Then we got to try our hand at assembling some watches. It was really hard, so don't ever ask me to fix a watch for you. But with the help of their technicians, we were able to squeak by their tight quality control tests. Even the underwater pressure test, which is where I totally thought I screwed up. Malmo was a great city. I wish we had more time there. And thanks again to Cronenby for hanging out with us and showing us around. And if you haven't already seen it, make sure you go check out our Stockholm travel video too.